What's up, everybody, and welcome to the X's and O's. This one is for a fight on the prelims of UFC 300 between Hanato Moicano and Jalen Turner. Guys, if you're new to my X's and O's series, I'll go ahead and link the playlist down below. I've already done several for UFC 300. We'll start with the tail of the tape, a quick preview of this matchup, and then we'll get into the keys to victories for both guys, how I see each guy winning, and, and some of the technicalities and analytics heading into this matchup on both sides. So first, guys, what we're looking at here between Moicano and Jalen Turner, in my opinion, is a fight that is going to have a lot of excitement. Now, I am going to be very blunt and transparent with you. I like Hanato Moicano, and I like Jalen Turner. I think both guys are really cool dudes. You know, Hanato Moicano is really, you know, understands the showmanship side of, of fighting now. He's been loud on the microphone. He's been kind of drawing in the fan base, all those different types of things. But he's going in there with a, against a savage in Jalen Turner. And Jalen Turner is one of those guys as well. Just seems like a super nice guy who was on a crazy win streak for an extended period of time. Goes out there, has an absolute war with Dan Hooker. Goes out there, finishes Bobby Green violently. These are two very, very good guys in this division. But when we get into Hanato Moicano, right, this is a very interesting style clash. Because when we look at the records, both guys, obviously, you know, they, they've been in the UFC for an extended period of time. They're both very experienced. Jalen Turner, I don't know how this guy makes lightweight. I still, to this day, don't understand. Every time I talk about Jalen Turner, I'm like, oh, yeah, when he'll fight Kamara Usman. He'll fight this guy. Because I think he's a welterweight. I forget that he is a lightweight. I have no idea how he makes the weight class. But you see that 77-inch reach, Mercano 72. You know, Jalen Turner is definitely going to be the longer, rangier fighter. But the keys to victory, you know, when we take a look at Hanato Moicano, it's going to be very cut and dry. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that if he's standing in front of Jalen Turner in this matchup, Moicano is going to be in a lot of trouble. But when we look at Hanato Moicano, 10 wins by submission, four first round finishes. Hanato Moicano is outstanding in terms of the jiu-jitsu. He has really good grappling. We saw what he was able to do against Drew Dover in his last outing. Dover's a very powerful guy down at lightweight. He was landing some really, really good shots on Mo Moicano, had him hurt. Moicano was able to get to the body lock. You know, Moicano, Moicano also had a little bit of a layoff coming into that matchup, shaked off some of the cobwebs, was able to get to the body lock, was able to take down Drew Dober, control him, and steal those rounds away ba basically by just controlling Drew Dober on the ground. And if he's going to want to beat a guy like Jalen Turner, which I love this matchup because this is a ranked guy versus ranked guy, you know, so it's very exciting that we get that on the early prelims, right? It's not often that we get to ranked versus ranked on the early prelims. So that's another thing that makes this exciting. But when we look at some of the, the numbers here, striking accuracy, this is not Hanato Moicano's forte. Now, it's not to say Moicano can't strike and can't hurt Jalen Turner on the feet. I just wouldn't say that's the most likely thing uh, in this matchup. And then when we look at the takedown accuracy, six takedowns landed, 36 takedowns attempted. He's not exactly a guy that does a great job of taking people down when that's what he's looking to do. You know, he's not a guy that's putting on his wrestling shoes, chasing takedown after takedown. But if the, if the fight does hit the floor, Moicano is a dangerous guy in terms of the submissions. And Jalen Turner is going to know that coming into this matchup. But here's where we get concerned, right? Hanato Moicano is not, you know, a, 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 poking, a poking point style fighter. You know what I mean? He's not going to sit on the outside and just play a points game against anybody. He's going to get in there and he's going to fight. That's what's exciting about Hanato Moicano. That might get him into a little bit of trouble in this match because he's going to have to close the gap and try to close down Jalen Turner, which is a lot easier said than done when you got a guy that's six foot three at 155 who's not just tall, but has legit power and uses a very diverse skill set to keep you at range. But when we look at these numbers here, 4.4 significant strikes landed per minute and absorbed 3.8 significant strikes uh, per minute. So that right there, that's not, that's, that's close, obviously. So what that means is Moicano is getting in the pocket and he's not afraid to kind of slug it out and make this thing a, a little dirty if he needs to. That's what he's going to have to do against Jalen Turner. He cannot sit on the outside because if he does, he's going to get picked apart and he is going to get seriously hurt in this matchup because Jalen Turner sometimes doesn't get the credit that he deserves in terms of the technicalities of the striking. While Hanato Moicano does have some decent striking and it has came a long way, I'd like to see him try to close the distance and get a hold of Jalen Turner and look to control him. Because when we come over here to the takedown department when it comes to Moicano, 61% significant strike defense, 73% takedown defense, that's pretty good. 
you know, obviously, Hanada Moicano, if he wants to fight on the floor, we've seen the stats above here. You know, he, he's he's not a guy that's going to get taken down and controlled. And then this matchup, that's not something we really have to be worried about. I'd be blown away if Jalen Turner came into this matchup and wanted to grapple with Hanada Moicano. I don't think we see that. So none of that really plays too much of a factor other than this in terms of, I think Moicano is going to have a little bit of a hard time getting a hold of Jalen Turner. But when he does, he's going to have to make it count. Because when we take a look at so the win by uh, the win method here for Hernando Moicano, 18 wins, eight by decision, 10 by submission. So safe to say, if he's not able to outpoint Jalen Turner, which I don't see that happening, and then he's not able to sub Jalen Turner, well, it looks like Hernando Moicano is probably not going to win this fight. But if he's able to get a hold of Turner, he's able to close the gap and take him down, I think Moicano has a lot of success. But when we look at the significant strikes by target, 71% to the head, 10% to the body, 19 to the leg, Decent. You know what I mean? Hanada Moicano is not some world beater in terms of the striking, but like I said, it's came a long way. He's got decent pop in his hands, and we saw him against Drew Dober. That's a tough fight against Drew Dober, guys. Like, I feel like Moicano is not getting the credit that he deserves considering the layoff coming into that matchup, going in there against the Savage and Drew Dober, being able to take down Drew Dober. We saw Islam Makachev be able to control Dober, but that's Islam. You know, to see Moicano do that, I found that pretty impressive. Gets the unanimous decision win. Goes in there in the first round and makes rather quick work of Brad Riddell. Gets a nice submission victory. And then the fight before that, coming in uh, back in 2022, losing unanimous decision uh, against Rafael Dos Anjos. He took the fight on short notice. I think it was like less than five days notice or something. He ended up taking the fight, which is everything that you need to know about Hanada Moicano, man. This guy is an absolute fighter. And prior to that, he goes out there, subs Alexander Hernandez, subs Jai Herbert. You know, got KO'd by Fazi before that. But other than that, guys, Hanada Moicano absolutely has a shot to win this fight. But if he's going to do it, he's going to have to close the distance safely with, with keeping the damage to a minimum, getting a hold of Jalen Turner, taking it uh, into his world, and looking to try to take the back and sub Jalen Turner. That's how I see Moicano getting it done uh, if that is uh, how he's going to win. Okay, moving on to Jalen Turner. This is just one of the more fascinating guys in the weight class. And I don't mean to sit here and gloat and, and kind of build up Jalen Turner like crazily unfair to Moicano because I really like Hanado Moicano. I'm rooting for him in this matchup. I like both guys, but I think Moicano is hilarious and I really like him. So, but when we look at Jalen Turner, this is a guy that doesn't get the credit he deserves, ladies and gentlemen. Like, I'm just being honest. You know, 14 wins, seven losses, 10 wins by knockout, four by submission, 11 first round finishes. So Jalen Turner... He can be dangerous if the fight hits the floor. It's not exactly his forte. He's a tall, long, rangy guy. He's going to want to try to keep Hanada Moicano at the end of his strike. So that's what we're going to see uh, Turner look to implement. But if Hanada Moicano wants to play this game like he did with Dober and try to get a hold of him and take him down, Moicano is going to have to be careful because we've seen Jalen Turner, you know, they call him the tarantula man. And he does have some decent sneaky submissions if you're not careful. Now, what I will say is this. When we get into the striking accuracy, 49%, 514 significant landed, uh, 1051 here in terms of the attempts. But when we look here, significant strikes landed per minute, six, that's pretty high. Then we look at significant strikes absorbed, 4.6. Now that is going to be a little bit inflated due to the war against Dan Hooker. And Jalen Turner, as long and rangy as he is, he does let people tend to close him down a little bit. And that's where he tends to get into a little bit of trouble. I know he went out there and made pretty quick work and, and, and made it look pretty easy against Bobby Green. But Bobby Green's style of fighting was kind of a nightmare going in against a guy like Jalen Turner. Because Jalen Turner is long and rangy. Bobby Green likes to keep his hands down and a lot of head movement and you know all that slick movement, which is hard to do when a guy is significantly taller and able to keep you at the end of his shots. But when we kind of get over here into the takedown stuff, takedown accuracy, nine uh, takedowns attempted, he's landed more than half of them. But I, like I said, I don't think we see Jalen Turner entertain any of the grappling. He's going to want to keep Moicano at range. In terms of the takedown defense, 76%. That's pretty good for Jalen Turner. But we have seen if you can get a hold of Jalen Turner and you can take him down and put him on his back, I think Moicano is going to be able to have a lot of success. And not only that, He'll tire and kind of inflate the arms and legs of Jalen Turner and make them a little bit slower when they're out in the open space and they're kind of duking it out on the feet. But when we get down here, this is what I really like about Jalen Turner. And I know that numbers, that this is just data, guys, but they do tell us something. When we look at the significant strikes by target, 68% to the head, 26 to the body, 5% to the leg. 
I would like to see Jalen Turner work the legs of his opponent a little bit more. I know that there's a lot of orthodox fighters in the lightweight division, so that's a little bit of the of, of the responsibility of not having too many leg kicks because Turner Southpaw. But I would like to see him add some of those into his game because with the kicks that he has, I just think it would it would keep the opponent really guessing and really just be a great way to mix some things up. But I love this, 26% to the body. I know it's not super high, but compared to what we've seen with a lot of other fighters, that's pretty good. And a lot of that is that good front kick that Jalen Turner loves to throw and just that stabbing front kick up the middle to not just take the wind out of you, but really just beat up that body and start bringing your hands in tight and closing it down to where he can come around your guard and land some of those head kicks and some of those hooks he likes to throw. And then the 68% to the head. But over here, we already discussed this. Uh, 10 wins by uh, finish, four by submission, or 10 wins by TKO or KO. Okay, when we look at the record thus far of Jalen Turner, this is where I have a little bit of concern, right? We saw the win over Bobby Green. That was incredibly impressive. The fight before that against Dan Hooker, split decision. That was an absolute battle. That was a crazy fight. If you missed that one, I encourage you to go back and watch that fight because that was an absolute war. And the crazy thing is coming out of that fight, Dan Hooker was the guy that, that that was a lot more banged up than Jalen Turner was. So take from that what you will. Um, that also was a catch weight at 158. Turner missed weight. So that's kind of been the story with Jalen Turner throughout his career, man. Is It's kind of a struggle to make 155. So hopefully he does make weight for this fight. Then the fight before that, he lost a split decision to Matoush Gamrot. So if I'm Hanato Moicano, that's some of that game plan I'm looking to take from what Matoush Gamrot was able to do to Jalen Turner. Kind of back him up against the fence, control him, not give him that space to operate and just keep shooting takedowns and keep him guessing, guessing, guessing and land some of those shots over the top and take advantage of him overreacting. But prior to that, guys, I mean, we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six fight win streak, five, six fight, fight win streak here from Jalen Turner before this Matoush Gamrot loss. I mean, and look at some of these met, uh, some of these matchups here. Like Jamie Malarkey is a pretty good fighter. Brad Riddell, solid fighter. And then no harm, no foul to Matoush Gamrot. We've seen what Matoush Gamrot has been able to do inside the lightweight division. We saw his recent outing against RDA. So nonetheless, I think this is going to be a really, really fun fight. I think this is going to be, I think there's going to be a war. I think this is going to be back and forth. I do expect Jalen Turner to land a lot of really good shots on Hanato Moicano. So the question is going to be, when he lands those shots, how does Hanato Moicano react, react and respond? And is he able to close that gap between him and Jalen Turner? Because it's going to be a lot, you know, Jalen Turner, you know, Hanato Moicano is tall for the weight class. But in terms of the reach, Jalen Turner is a guy that just does a really good job of keeping you at the end of his strikes. And if uh, Hanato Moicano can work to get to the inside, find a way to get a hold of, of Jalen Turner and drag him into his world and look for a submission. I think that we could see Hanato Moicano pull off a win in this matchup. But if he's not able to do that, I just see Jalen Turner picking him apart and beating him up pretty bad and maybe getting a stoppage. I know this is only three rounds, but I think this is going to be an absolute battle, ladies and gentlemen. But like this video if you enjoyed. Comment your prediction for this matchup down below in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I appreciate you all. See you next time.